Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, and I am going over Unit A, Lesson 2, The Atom, Parts and Structure. What is the smallest piece of gold I can possibly have? So you've heard of bars of gold, an ounce of gold, maybe flakes of gold, or even gold dust. So you notice I keep putting smaller and smaller pieces. What's the absolute tiniest piece of gold that I could have? and it would be one atom of gold. So what is an atom? An atom is the smallest particle of an element still having the characteristics of that element. So again, I can keep cutting a piece of gold smaller and smaller and smaller, and if I had the right technology to do it, which you don't and I don't in my home, but in labs they do, where I could keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, the smallest possible piece I could have that was still gold would be one atom of gold. So again, the atom is the smallest particle of an element still having the characteristics of that element. So, well, what's an element? An element is a chemical substance that contains only one kind of atom and that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. So in other words, I cannot turn gold into helium. I can't turn silver into gold. Okay, and we'll talk a tiny bit about how you can technically do that with nuclear reactions, but that's very, very expensive labs, or it has to happen in a star or the sun, which of course is a star. So for all intents and intensive purposes, you cannot change an element into a different element. And again, all elements are in the periodic table. Elements have only one capital letter in their abbreviation or symbol. That's really important, especially coming up in the next couple of units. You always capitalize the first letter. If there's a second letter, it is always lowercase. And so we have our periodic table of element. You notice we have some that are radioactive. It shows that we use titanium when doing hip replacements. So there's a lot of interesting things, silicon in our computers. This is not on any of the tests or quizzes, but I threw it out there. So what is made of atoms? All matter is made of atoms. So, okay, what is atoms? As you can tell, there's a lot of vocab words in this one. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. How much space something takes up is its, think about it, hit the pause button if you need to, but how much space something takes up is its volume. So what are our common units for volume that we use in science class? Here's a reminder. And in science, we use liters for liquid volume. So if you said milliliters, that's fine too. Liters is just the base unit. And we use centimeters cubed for the volume of solids. So again, we take the length times the width times the height. You also have to multiply the units. So it's not just six times three times six, it's six centimeters times three centimeters times six centimeters which is how you get centimeters cubed. Just like in algebra class, if you take x times x times x, you get x to the third power. What is mass? Mass is how much stuff something is made up of. Now, mass is different than weight. However, for chemistry class, if it helps you to think of mass as the weight, that is okay. All right, when you get into physics, then you really got to make sure that you are thinking about them differently. But it's already hard enough to think of atoms because they're so crazy tiny that sometimes if you think about it as weight instead of mass, it kind of helps you out just when you're beginning chemistry. And that's okay. So how big is an atom of gold? You don't need to know any of this for any test or quiz this slide, but I just wanted to give you an idea. So it's point zero 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 zero. 0 0.06 of an inch. And that really doesn't mean anything. So draw an inch. It's about that big. All right, cut it in half. Half an inch. Cut it in half. Quarter of an inch. Cut it in half. An eighth of an inch. Cut it in half. That's a sixteenth of an inch. So compare that to our original. And we made one, two, three, four cuts. All right, that was four cuts. We cut it in half four times before our number went from tenths to hundredths. So all we did was we moved 
here we move our decimal place and think about how much smaller it would need to get than this to get a number with this many decimal places to move over. We would have to keep cutting it in half and 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 half some more. So it's crazy tiny. All right, back to stuff you definitely need to know. What is an atom made of? Hit pause, get your answer. Atoms are made of protons, electrons, and neutrons. And note, all protons in everything are exactly the same. All electrons in everything are exactly the same. All neutrons in everything are exactly the same. That is why the atom is the smallest piece of an element with that element's properties. Once you get smaller than an atom, everything is the same. Okay, so what makes gold gold is how many protons it has, along with the neutrons and the electrons, but specifically how many protons it has. Now, once you get smaller than that atom of gold, then it's just protons, electrons, and neutrons, and the protons, electrons, and neutrons in gold are the exact same protons, electrons, and neutrons in oxygen, it's just what? If all protons, electrons, and neutrons are the same, what makes a gold atom different from an atom of oxygen? Hit the pause button, think about it, get your answer. The number of protons determines which element the atom is. It's all about the protons. Therefore, we call the number of protons the what number? The atoms number or the atomic number. So the number of protons is what determines what element an atom is. What is the atomic number of carbon? Now I showed you two different examples of how periodic tables can look. The atomic number is the number of protons, which is six. So maybe you looked on this diagram, but when you look up here, it's always the smaller number and it's always a whole number. This means there are always six what? in carbon. If the atomic number is six, there are always six protons in carbon. Let's talk about protons. Charge, location, mass. Hit pause, get your answers. And the answers are, the charge is positive one. The location in the nucleus, well, what is the nucleus? It's the center of the atom. Okay, got to make sure you know that. What's the mass of a proton? Each proton is one AMU. What is an AMU? AMU stands for atomic mass unit. So why don't we use pounds or grams? I keep harping on you about grams and metrics. Well, why aren't I using them? Well, it's because the mass of one atom of carbon is 1.994 times 10 to the 23rd grams. Or in other words, this many zeros and then 1994 grams. So crazy, 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 crazy small. That's why we don't use grams. So instead scientists said, okay, let's just call it one and we'll make up a unit and call it atomic mass units. Let's look at electrons. Electrons, what's the charge of electrons? Negative one. Where are electrons located? Orbitals or shells or energy levels. They all mean exactly the same thing. And it's around the nucleus at specific distances from the nucleus. And so what I mean by this is when we draw it, a lot of times we use the Bohr diagram, which is good. So we got our nucleus and then we would say, okay, the electrons are gonna be buzzing around the nucleus. And we say that they always go in a nice circular path, okay? So we say, yep, they're going around, do, 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 and they're all happy. Well, really, it's not so much that they are going around in a perfect circle because they're three-dimensional. They can be coming towards you. They can go, be going away from you, up, down, sideways, left, right, left, left, right, 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 up, down like a cheat code when you play your PlayStation. Up, up, left, right, down, down. Sorry, bad joke. But the important thing is it's always a certain distance away from the nucleus, and that's why we call them energy levels. It's a certain distance. And what's the mass of an electron? 
zero EMU. Now, wait a minute. How can something weigh nothing? Well, technically they do weigh something, but they are so tiny compared to the protons and neutrons, which are already crazy tiny. It would be like if you hopped on the scale and you weigh 120 pounds, and then you pulled out one hair from the top of your head and you hopped back on the scale. It said 120 before, you pulled out a piece of hair. What is the scale gonna say? 120. Yeah, you lost one hair, but the scale is not even going to notice. It's the same idea with electrons. They're so light that when you gain or lose them, we can just ignore them as far as the mass concerns. So they're so light, it's like they weigh nothing. We can ignore them. How many electrons are in an atom? That can and will change when atoms combine to make new compounds. Electrons will be what? And again, when I ask you questions, hit pause button. See if you can get them before I say them. Electrons will be gained, lost, or shared. However, when we start out, we assume the atom is neutral, meaning when we add up all the protons and electrons charges, the total is zero. And specifically, we call this that the atom is electrically neutral because it has the same number of positives, the same number of negatives. We call that electrically neutral. And that's how it starts out. So the atomic number of carbon is six. This means there are always six protons in carbon. Six protons, each with a positive one charge, gives a total charge of what for all the protons? So we have six protons. Each of them has a plus one charge. What's my total plus charges with all my protons? It's plus six. Now, if I want my atom to be neutral, I have plus six right? And what would I have to add to equal zero? Well, think of math class, I'd have to add a negative six. So what is the negative six telling us that we have? That negative six says six electrons, each one with a negative one charge. So when we start, we're neutral. We have six positives, six negatives, that gives us an overall charge of zero. They cancel out. All right, let's go to our next subatomic particle. Neutrons. Neutrons charge zero, or neutral, or no charge. It means the same thing. Where are neutrons located? In the nucleus. What's the mass of the neutron? Each neutron is one AMU, which is the same as what? A proton. The atomic number of carbon is six. This means there are always six what in carbon? Six protons in carbon. We start with an electronically neutral atom. So the number of blank in an atom of carbon also starts out with six. In this case, it would be the number of electrons because I'm saying I want the overall to be neutral. So plus six minus six. How do we find the number of neutrons in an atom? Okay, now we look at the mass number. So the mass number is the other number on the periodic table. So round the mass number to a whole number. So in this case, it's 12.0107. So would you round up to 13 or round down to 12? You would round down to 12. So round the mass number to a whole number, so that's 12. Subtract the number of protons. Because only protons and neutrons have mass. So it would be 12 minus 6. Think of it this way. What if I said the total atom is 12 pounds? Each proton is 1 pound, and I have 6 protons. Does it make more sense if I use pounds instead of AMU? If it does, then just do that in your head for now. So what do I have left over? I have six. I have six pounds left over. Pretend each neutron weighs a pound, even though it really weighs one AMU, and that tells you how many neutrons are in the atom. Okay, we will finish up in the next recording.